We are live for this week's Flippinar on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Welcome aboard to this particular Flippinar show number 40. So I'll let Adria take it over and we, we have everyone ready to rock. So uh, you can start loading your questions. Adria, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, cool beans. Welcome everyone. Happy February. It is February 1st, 2018. Uh, we made it through January. It seems like it was a whole dang long year, but welcome. I'm glad this is the 40th webinar that we've done. As you can see, we have Todd Flipman and Taylor. We have Miss Renikia here with us this evening as well. Um, just a little house cleaning that we always do. Um, we're here every Thursday, various times, depending on your location. Um, this is to give you information that you need to begin your journey on wholesaling um, residential homes um, and actually going even beyond that. Um, this information that we're providing right now is free, um, along with the 200 plus videos that Ty has available on YouTube for you guys. So make sure you utilize those resources. Um, he can always be reached at flipman.net if you need to reach out, talk to him. Um, but what we do right now, this platform, is you post your questions on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. I read the questions. They answer the questions. It's that simple. Um, I do hop around, try not to ask the same questions twice, try to get as much information to you guys in this one hour as possible. Um, I like going through, seeing where everybody's from. So we have Deborah in Connecticut, Clifton, Birmingham, Sheila in Baltimore, um, New York, Henderson, Nevada. Hey, guys. Welcome. If it's your first time here, make sure you tag a friend, bring someone along, help them get this, you know, new year rolling with uh, income that they probably weren't looking for. It's a good way to supplement your income if that's what you're needing to do. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and begin. Ah, I see you, Indianapolis and Delaware. Um, we'll begin. Any Renikia, for those of them who are just joining us, some people are new, go ahead and introduce yourselves, tell them who you are, and a little about what you what your what information you're gonna bring to us tonight, other than answering their questions. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on here again tonight. My name is Renikia Williams out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I've been in real estate and studying real estate and finance and, and investing in real estate and um, I'm utilizing financial principles to build my real estate portfolio over the last 14 years, as long as helping others. Um, my focus is to show um, individuals a strategic route to generational wealth um, through using the real estate vehicle. I have a host of education, um, master's in finance, undergrad in real estate and finance, realtor license, insurance license, security license, and a host of financial license that I have um, studied over the years to perfect my craft. And I um, just want to simplify those pr um, principles and be able to bring that to you all as well. All right. Well, as always, we thank you for being here. Um, and let's get the questions rolling, guys. Uh, what is who watching? Code knows mortgage on Instagram's asking, what are you watching? I'm, mm, I'm oh, you're talking to Ty probably. He ain't focused. Um, <laughs> let's see here. H Town in the building, by the way, of 205. What's up, Houston? Um, come on, guys. Let's go ahead and get the questions going. I'm looking. I don't see any. I know y'all have some things y'all want to say. Let's see here. Tony M, YouTube. Ty, I watched your video on dealing with agents and I followed the steps. The agent asked me to meet at their office to put it under the contract with my POF and view the property. What do I do next? Well, uh, either one of you guys answer that. So this Tony's dealing with the realtor. How does that work out? Um, yeah, um, most realtors, um, it's, it's kind of, um, I guess, com uh, um, standards uh, for a realtor to ask for PO um, proof of funds um, before they take you out because they don't want to waste their time with an individual who cannot purchase. So it's really protocol. Um, I would say that um, get with your hard money lender. I get with a lender to give you some type of um, uh, proof of funds um, to be able to go out there if you want to deal with that particular realtor. Or you find your realtor who understand the vision of what you're trying to do. 
and I want to partner with you. I kind of like to use the word partnership. I don't want just a realtor. Let's partner and see how we could add value to one another. And then that's how you, you begin to build that relationship to get away, get around those standards of a standard of, of most realtors. All right. Instagram Omega PHX says, hey, guys, when double closing, excuse me, when double closing, do you recommend paying title insurance as a wholesaler? My title company is forcefully charging title insurance twice. If, um, no, I don't. No, I don't. I And I always question that. And to be honest with you, you have to um, question it. Um, question your attorney. I always check my attorney. If I know that I'm double closing and I'm not taking possession of that property, I want that to reflect in the numbers, I mean, of the expenses of, of the double closing. So if I were you just question that, let them know that, hey, I'm double closing and I'm not taking a taking it in possession and I'm not for sure why are you charging me title insurance. And um, just negotiate that because attorney going to get his, he going he gonna to want to get his money. Um, and if you don't catch it, it's your fault. So that was a good, um, you caught that. That was a, um, a you know great way of paying attention to the details because attorneys will get over on you. So um, question it, challenge it. No, I do not believe in paying title insurance twice. I don't believe in paying a lot of um, expenses twice when I, when I double close. All right, let's see here. Um, going with YouTube. Hello, Flipman. What are some <laughs> Ty, What are some companies you use for direct mail for postcards? And do you use your actual number on Bandit Signs or a Google Voice number where Royce Realty? Fortunately for you, we got something just for you. Oh yeah! Th thanks for that snow, that uh, that softball. <laughs> thanks for that softball. We hit it out of the park, but uh, boom, uh, mail to flip. So to answer your question, I don't ever use my actual phone number on anything. There's so many places you can get uh, phone numbers. Uh, Google Voice, obviously, which is free if they have available area codes for your market uh, within your city or whatever uh, market you're tar targeting. Um, I use I started recently using this service called Umail to provide a number, which will allow you to set up a voicemail if you wanted to, but it also will allow you to forward uh, a given number to your number. So there's just so many services out there. So um, so I'm going to recommend mail to flip, obviously, because that's what I've been preaching. And basically what it is, is just uh, uh, postcards with the picture of the property, uh, owner's property on there. It's all about getting someone's attention, getting them to read your message. You know, whenever you're doing direct mail, at the end of the day, that's, that's your goal, always. All right, Royce. So there you have it. Mail to flip .com. Um, Off-roader. Starting off early with the, is it a deal question? Um, he says, I got a house I can get for $3,500. The after repair value is 45K, but Zillow has the estimate for 93. It needs about 25 grand in repairs. Is it a deal? So I say just sticking with the 25 been repaired, the 35, that's 50, 60. Oh. Oh, no, 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 3500 So 29000 and it's forty five. Is that a deal? What is your exit strategy? To flip it? Well, for off-roader, I'm going to say flipping it. He, he's flipping it, yeah. Um, yes, I mean, yeah. It sounds like a, a good deal. You're definitely um, below the 70% threshold. Um, so, yeah, it does sound like a, a deal. Absolutely. All right, off road. percent would be at thirty one. So, and also given that you have um, uh, multiple evaluations of the after repair value, you may want to get with the realtor to pull accurate comps off the MLS um, in order for you to um, validate which one of those are the true A or B. Because if it's really ninety thousand, you can make a lot more money. So you want to know those numbers going in, um, so you can hit the highest number that you can sell it for. You don't leave any money on the table. 
All right, on Facebook, um, welcome Anthony Blake. He wants to know what happens if he doesn't close within 30 days. Um, usually you can either go back to the seller if you cannot close and see if you get an extension, but it's really up to the seller to extend your contract. So if you don't close, you, the consequences will be of losing your earnest money um, or you can try to get an extension. So you don't lose your earnings money. Okay. Um, hopefully, Anthony, that answers your question. And sticking with Facebook, the very next question we have is going to be from Malika. Um, she says, hello, I'm new to flipping and looking to get started on finding my first flip while also learning the game. Would, would do hard money be a great company to invest $3,000 in to start? I guess the company is called Do Hard Money. I'm not familiar with that. Um, they want you to invest $3,000 in their company? Um, as far as what it reads, yes. Would do, would do Hard Money be a great company to invest $3,000 in to start? Malika, if you're available, um, explain that a little bit. What exactly is that company and what are you getting by investing $3,000 into it? Um, because as right. we put here, most definitely is you shouldn't have to put money into somebody else to do this. You can do this on your own. Um, right. So I'm just explain uh, the hard money. Uh, most hard money lenders, not most, all hard money, hard money lenders will give you money to purchase a property and money to rehab the property. Um, usually they want you to put some skin in the game, which may be 10, 15, 20 percent, depending on your um, experience and how many deals you have recently flipped. Um, so that's kind of how it works. So I'm not for sure. Maybe they asked me 3000 as a down payment. Um, just specify uh, what that $3,000 investment is. All right. Um, she just simply said, yes. Yes. What Malika? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I know you're, I know you're here. So clear that up and we'll come back to that. Um, on YouTube, let's see here. Question from. Larray, do you know of any lending companies hmm, that purchase properties and fund rehabs, then once flip is done, split 50-50, all with no money down? Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> what do they need you for? They need a partner, right. though. So that's what they're looking for, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> that's an ideal situation everybody looking for. Um, but... Um, you may just want to um, build out your team. Um, if you don't have, um, if you don't have the money, see, because one of the, the programs that we have um, is is our gap funding. Uh, one thing I realized that a lot of uh, people in the underserved communities or communities of, of my community as such um, didn't have enough money to make the down payment. Um, as I just stated, hard money lenders will give you the money to purchase and the money to rehab the deal. They give you up to ninety percent. Um, of purchase and up to 100% of the rehab amount. You usually have to come to the table with that 10, 15, 20% plus calls and costs and points. Um, and that's what we um, utilize the gap funding for is to be able to, um, to be able to finance that down payment that is needed to secure a hard money loan. Um, and, and with that being said, you're able to purchase, um, hard, you're able to purchase a property using coupling both of those loans together. If you are, if you have limited resources to be able to make it happen. All right. Um, on Instagram, Marquise asks, how do I sound professional when talking to sellers if I have zero experience wholesaling? <laughs> okay, Ty. Oh, sure. <laughs> Confident. <laughs> oh, y'all <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, first, the first thing that'll go a long way is um, actually knowing what you're talking about. Uh, that'll go a long way into sounding professional. But uh, one of the great things about, we, we, you know, most of this is about wholesaling. We talk about other stuff. But uh, one of the great things about wholesaling is that, okay, you get on the phone and you sound like an idiot. Okay. So the next time that... Uh, well, well, we're going to assume that's not your last call with a seller, right? So you, you'll know why you sounded 
like you didn't know what you were talking about. So now you go fill in those holes to, to try to improve the next conversation that you have with the seller. No matter what I say to you and what whoever else says, nothing is going to be better than actual experience. Now, you can sort of try to uh, eliminate those uh, those bad experiences by educating yourself, whether it's through me or whoever, um, and, and try to fast forward. But at the end of the day, you still got to just dive into it. And sometimes you're just going to be thrown that question you don't know the answer to, because especially when you're starting out or whatever. Um, so <laughs> again, you know, a little egg on your face is free, you know, but that experience that you gain is, is valuable. But at the end of the day, you want to try to educate yourself as much as possible so you can reduce uh, the number of times that happens starting out. So. Yeah, and, and just to piggyback on that, solely right is, is, is really boils down to your level of, of education. And just think about how confident are you on at the first day of a job? Um, you're not as confident, but as you learn um, the job over, over time, you get more confident. So I would say, just as, as um, Ty said, to continue to educate yourself. One thing, always, always represent yourself as a group. So if you don't know the answer to, you can say, hey, you know what, I'm going to get my partner on the phone who are um, a little bit more averse in uh, what you just asked. So um, if you give me a chance, I'll give you a call right back with my partner on the phone. So sometimes you want to connect with someone. So when you be, um, um, when you start contacting seller, maybe connect with someone and um, just play the third party on the phone and, 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 and see how they handle um, on those calls as well. Um, and our, our, our connect with someone who could partner the call with you. So if it's a question that you don't answer, you all can tag team it. And over time, I mean, you just get you just get stronger with with experience. All right. Welcome, single mom phenom. And Renata says she's here. Thank you for the reminder call, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Um, Dwayne Wave on Instagram, is there access to funding for a recent college graduate with a 730 plus credit score? Um, what, what, I guess, what other stipulations would he need if he wanted to jumpstart in this thing? Um, absolutely. Um, it, you know, um, regardless of what you're, regardless of, you know, getting out of college, just starting, retire, it doesn't really matter where you come from. Um, if, if you have a, a, the credit score that can be leveraged. So uh, really with the 740, um, you can def definitely leverage your credit to, to get up to $150,000 of unsecured credit. Um, as you also know that hard money lending is not really credit score driven or credit um, driven at all. It's really asset driven. So if you go out and find the right asset, there will be a hard money lender that will lend on it no matter what your credit score is or your status if you have a job or you don't have a job. It's all about the asset as a whole. All right. CJ on Facebook states, uh, I just took a leak of faith and bought bandit signs. I'm in DMV. I have 100 signs. Once I plant my signs, what do I do next? Do I try and get an absentee list? <laughs> I'll piggyback on that. I mean, I, um, I mean, you really just wait until your, your I mean, as, as you plant the signs, you know, you hoping your, your phone start ringing. Um, if it don't, you continue to do it. It's the consistency with these signs. It's consistency with everything. Um, but the absentee list is a different um, avenue of marketing. Um, and I believe in, um, in, in multiple ways of marketing all at the same time. It's not just one way that works. It's, um, putting out the banner signs is sending out your your, your postcards is going out in in the local in your local market meeting um, um, local real estate investors in your real groups um, I'm really big on and Ty we, we talked about that last week that he's more of an introvert but um, it is power in getting out meeting people because everyone is to me is a client everybody is a client why because everybody deserves uh, financial freedom and everybody um, don't know the avenue to financial freedom. So everybody has the possibility to use real estate um, as, a, as a retirement vehicle. So every, the whole world becomes a client if you really think about it. But most importantly, surrounding yourself with other real estate investors 
um, and, your, and your local real groups or local real estate um, groups that's in your area. So it's a combination of, of all, all, all simultaneously. And I'm, I'm sure you're talking. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, don't don't think that uh, that 100 signs that already get in your mind. I'm I'm about to buy 100 more or whatever you can afford. I understand everybody didn't have my I, I get it. I get it. Trust me, I do. Uh, but having your mind that that's not going to be the last hundred I buy. Look at it as that's the first hundred of a thousand that I'm going to buy. Uh, then, like you said, you want to have uh, other. Uh, avenues of uh, marketing. So yeah, an absentee list and understand that if you're going to do uh, direct mail or uh, whatever your budget will allow you to do, you need to commit to it. Uh, and whether it's every week or every month or every couple of months or whatever. And um, like she said, um, I strongly encourage uh, going out to real meetings um, and meeting people is just something that doesn't fit me. I know I'll be wasting my time, but I'm going to tell you the right thing to do is to do it or whatever, because um, not that I think I know everything, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I know me, but I'm just saying, go do that, you know, because I totally agree with Renika, your uh, networking, and I admire people that can do it. I just sit back and like, damn, I wish I could do that. Or whatever, and so but but I know what I am. So you know, I know my, what my weaknesses are. So, uh, but uh, for those that um, can do that and are willing to force themselves to do it, because sometimes you have to force yourself and do. Because I do force myself to do stuff I don't like. Uh, but uh, you want to definitely do that because you never know who you're gonna meet. Like like she said, you know. So and uh, just uh, someone that just maybe just willing to help hold your hand and walk you through transactions. Now, and then you understand that the larger the city, the, the more real groups you're going to have. So you want to visit some of them are not probably going to fit what you're looking for, from my experience. Um, uh, and then others will. So uh, but again, you still can, depending on what your what your end game is, you know, who you, who and how, who you meet and, and what you still be to you and vice versa, what you still be to them is always uh, ideal to create a win win. So. So boom. So, but you want to try to do as many things as possible as far as marketing. You uh, just to not to keep rambling here, but you you want to do some cold calling also, and that's simply I like to personally target you know landlords, people that are trying to rent rent properties. You know you want to do that also. Now it doesn't cost you anything but time. So you just understand you know the conversation that needs to be had when you're talking to them. So and and, and another cost effectively cost effective marketing and driving for dollars you know as you are out um putting out your bandit signs maybe go into the neighborhoods and see if there are any abandoned properties write down that address and um and and go to the county records and get their mailing address and send them out a yellow letter letting them know that you are a seasonal investor in the area um and you are looking to purchase their property um so all right. In regards to driving for dollars, Ashley on YouTube says, I did driving for dollars and found four vacant homes within a one mile radius. I used the Land Glide app and found the names of the owners. Assuming the numbers are right, how would I find cash buyers? <laughs> well, you need, uh -oh. deal, you need a deal first, but go ahead, Renick. You need, just no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, just because you found vacant houses, <laughs> you, you need a deal first. <laughs> number one, you need to be able to reach the seller, uh, number one. And then you got to have a deal, you know, based on what other houses are selling for the ARV, uh, what condition you got to take into consideration the repairs, obviously. And then obviously whatever money you're trying to make or you, you would like to make. Uh, but just finding four vacant houses, hey, yippee, yippee. But that's that's easy to do. That's easy to do. Finding vacant houses, that's just the beginning part of it because just because they're vacant, that mean they want to sell, but you don't know they want to sell unless you let yourself be known, whether it's through direct mail or picking up the phone or just simply knocking on their actual door, see if they want to sell the property. So then, you know, of course, buyers will, will come, you know, that's the next level. But on just based on those four properties, the first thing you got to figure out is they want to sell the properties and hopefully they'll sell at a price that makes sense. And um, just to piggyback on that, um, in, in my opinion, the same way you find a buyer is the same way, you, I mean, the same way you find a seller is the same way you find a buyer. Um, um, every seller is a buyer and every buyer is a seller. So when I'm dealing with investors as a whole, I always ask them, 
I say, hey, I, um, I have a, a platform or databases of um, investment properties that I get on a weekly basis. What are your criteria? Are you buying? So every, you know, every seller could be a buyer and every buyer could be a seller. So use the same tactic um, to find um, cash buyers as well. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons why I go out and network a lot is because most, most real cash buyers are not, you know, they're, they're not just sitting around somewhere. These are people who are in certain events and in, in certain locations at certain um, restaurants. And, you know, you just go out there and everyone, everyone, I, I look at the whole world as a client. Every time I meet someone, I don't care where I am, I'm going to give you a business card because real estate is life for everybody. All right. Demond Brown has a question regarding the one page contract. And Demond, I'm going to say, I guess I can answer this one. Don't make it too complicated. He wants to know, do you complete the contract in script? Regular ink pen is a contract. Blue or black ink print legibly so the title company can read it. And of course, the signature. If you choose to type it up, that's unnecessary. But I think just don't overcomplicate that part. Just put the information, plug and chug the info, and just let that be done. Correct? Yay? Nay? Keep it simple. Don't use a pencil and keep it simple. <laughs> Blue or black ink. Blue or black ink, no red. Just, just leave it at that. I mean, it's... This Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Just make sure your name and, you know, the important information is their address owner, amount you're negotiating, make sure that as is, you know, everything else is going to be there. Um, but the real Italian Superman on Instagram um, wants to know, the moment I get the buyer to sign the contract, what's the process after? How do I get my check? Well, it's some steps in between that contract and the check, but uh, I'll let the, one of these two explain <laughs> explain that for you. So that means that you already find an end buyer? Doesn't specify. Or, All we have is a contract, according to the you know the question. All right, is this the seller contract or the end buyer contract? Ah, because so there's two contracts involved in the wholesale deal. All right, the real Italian. Which one is it? Do you have one, or do you have two contracts? Say if he had both contracts, we have the the seller and the end buyer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have both contracts, um, what I do is email my contracts to my attorney and let them take it from there. It's kind of like football or the baton if you run, if you um, running in the race. So I send off my contracts to my attorney. I'll make sure the attorney has each party contact information so they can contact each party to get their seller information or buyer's information. Um, the attorney's going to pull the title. The attorney's going to draw the HUD. And, and and everyone comes to the closing table. So once you get both contracts, your job is somewhat complete. Um, just get those two contracts over to the attorney. Make sure you put um, the contact information to both buyers and sellers so the attorney can contact each party directly. And uh, once you get the HUD, make sure your fee is on the HUD. Make sure all the numbers look right um, before you get to the closing table. They're important. Because if they if they if they forget your fee off the HUD and get to the closing table, it's too late to begin to negotiate all of that. So make sure all of that is on the HUD before y'all get to the closing table. Yeah, you might want to explain to them what a HUD is. Everybody won't won't know what that is. Okay, so HUD is pretty much um, an itemized spreadsheet um, for a closing. It itemized the um, the numbers or the monies. Uh, for the closing um, and all the closing costs that are involved in there um, per buyer and per seller uh, on each side. So it's an itemized um, um, expense sheet for pretty much um, in simplest terms, itemized expense sheet for the um, transaction. All right. Um, Sheila Preston has a question. Um, she says, she has a nine unit fire damage department complex. And I think uh, the owner wants give or take about 50,000 for it. Her question was, uh, is there a way for me to get a loan if I did seller financing? Um, I have a potential apartment that had fire with nine apartments. This would be a fix and flip. Um, yes, yes, you just want to, um, 
Um, even if you do seller financing, um, you just want to be able to um, make sure you do your seller financing paperwork that gives you um, controllable access to the property that allow you to be able to get um, um, that will allow you to be able to get financing on the property. Um, so you need to make sure you have your seller financing paperwork in place that gives you controllable interest in the in the property. Also, I guess, uh, make sure if you're trying to, I guess, purchase the property, your property yourself through uh, owner financing that uh, make sure you got enough money to fix it because it does you no good with that uh, fire damaged property and uh, you don't have the resources to repair it to um, to do whatever your or whatever your end game is on it. So uh, it's just not setting up the terms because the owner probably is eager to set up some some easy terms for you knowing the condition of the property and he can he can generate income on a on a burnout property you know what i'm saying so um just make sure that you have the resources the funding to uh um, repair the property and dealing with fire damaged property you know that the price that the the uh, cost of repairs can get up get up there quickly you know with all the um uh permits and stuff you have to pull because of wiring and plumbing and and uh, everything to bring it back up to code. So just make sure it is properly funded is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Robert Cooper on Facebook uh, wants to know, uh, will your one page contract work in Texas? Uh, the one page contract works anywhere. There's, there's well, no yeah, the, um, the contract that I give away to, to uh, whoever wants it uh, at flipman.net um th that contract it's been i don't know all 50 states but you know i talk to people all over the country that are not students for any one reason or another but you know i have actual uh testimonials on students from houston and dallas that have used their contract to do deals so most definitely back to that nine apartment uh fire nine fire damage department, she said that the owner is willing to do, uh, I guess, the financing without any money down. Um, mm -hmm. She thinks that's a deal, don't mm -hmm. you? Run your numbers. <laughs> Run your numbers. I mean, that, that sounds like a really great deal, but it sounds like he's trying to give it away as well. So um, um, before you sign off on anything, you want to get at least three contractors to go out there and get your scope of work because, you know, you, you never know. You know, if it's um, it can get to a point where it's not a deal anymore. And oh, yeah. um, so you want to run your numbers prior to signing off anything, regardless of how cheap it is, um, still run your numbers and, and run it compared to what other, other part. All right. Okay. She was Thank to make you. sure you are not overly um, 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 extending yourself on a project that no longer makes sense. All right. Well, Sheila, keep us informed. She said, thank you so much for your info. The seller received three estimates of 600K. Um, oh. so not whoa, 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 let's, let's stop. Let's, let's stop. Whoa, let's whoa, 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 whoa. You need to give that away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, not, that's whoa, nine whoa, units. 600. Yeah, n nine units? Nine's not a deal. That's not a deal. Yeah, where is that? In New York? Because the rents would have to be... Well, the rents on each unit would have to be a thousand to fifteen hundred. Just I'm just thinking out loud here, but a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a unit in that area to justify a property like that. What do you think, Reniki? Um, I mean, when when I when I divided the nine units into that six hundred thousand, it came to be sixty six thousand um, plus the fifty thousand, which is what about. Um, I'm a, it's less than ten thousand. You can. So you tell only about twenty five thousand a unit. Um. Yeah, you're gonna your your rent needs to be your rent is gonna definitely need to be over a thousand. So really make that work. Yeah, you could tear those units down and build it probably for less than six hundred. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> right. Calls brand new, just scraping. No, 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 no. I think no. That's the that's the ARV for the units. It's six hundred. Oh, oh, oh. Only okay. only wants oh. 50. The only only wants 50 for them. Oh, but that still would put it 
Uh, the rent would still be significant, though, what, seven, eight hundred for it to come out with an ARV? Well, first of all, based on what cap rate, because that's what it's going to boil down to, mm -hmm. based on, on on what cap rate are we talking about? Because uh, if you're doing a pro forma on something like that on nine units, um, you, you're still talking mm -hmm. like we almost said probably anywhere from eight, nine hundred to a thousand dollars per unit on just nine units, easily that. So if that's the area, you know, it, it is what it is. If that's the type of area it's in, or uh, whatever, you can get up for 50, then, but we, we thought you were talking about it was gonna right. cost 600,000 to repair it. That's what we thought you were saying. Well, what, what is the repair, what is the repair amount? You don't have that information. Uh, Sheila, do you, have you figured out how much it's gonna cost to repair these nine fire damage units? units? Um, Cause it has to be pretty significant if she's letting them go for 50. She did mention that the owner lives on the block. So I, I like to think if the owner is willing to live in the area that the, the units are in, that it must not be that bad. Um, it's she, all, it, it all boils down to the numbers. You know, I mean, real estate is a numbers game. I don't care what they, I don't care what, I don't care what he's giving, giving you the property for. If it costs six hundred thousand to fix it, and then it's not, it's no longer a deal. So it's all about the numbers, regardless if they, you know, it seems like a great deal. Um, it's gonna boil down to how much money it's gonna take for you to repair that project. All right, moving on. Hello, and she's in Philadelphia, Cleveland. Oh, somebody from Tuscaloosa. Hey, Betty Smith. Um, let's see here. Uh, Corey wants to know, can anyone tell me the best way to structure a master lease agreement for commercial multifamily buildings? Master lease agreement? A master lease agreement? I'm familiar with it. Um, it it's basically the, my understanding. And so anyone, feel free to correct me out there. But it's basically similar to a, uh, a lease option or whatever, where they're not actually, you're not taking title. It's a form of owner finance. Let me just start there. It's a form, form of owner financing, but you're not actually taking a deed or title to the property. And so you would work out terms with the uh, owner of the property and uh, the income basically would still uh, pay for the property. Say the income on the property was five grand and the owner was used to getting that. Now with the master lease agreement, you know, he may only get 2000 and you keep the 3000 and your end game may be, it may be a value add opportunity where they're going to, uh, uh, it may, we'll just say it's, it's 30 units and only 18 of them are rented. So where the opportunity may be for you is to uh, get it close to being, you know, feel maybe 28 units or whatever. And then that's when you may cash them out, cash them out maybe in a three to five year period. That's my understanding. I've never done it before, so, but that's my understanding of it. So, um, but it's basically just a form of owner financing. All right, um, hope that answered your question there. Uh, Eric wants to know, and this is from Instagram, when deciding to invest in a particular market, who is the best person or individual that you can speak with that will provide you with prudent information on this topic? Um, I guess maybe if it's an area that he's not familiar with that he's interested in investing in, who would he speak with? Would it be looking at local realtor signs or neighbor, realtor signs in the neighborhood and asking them about the area or who could he speak with? Um, in my opinion, I think some of the number one people to speak with is definitely realtors in that area who can um, pull you um, comps in the area of what the properties are going for, how much how many properties that's on the market in that area? How many properties have sold? Um, what have they sold for? Um, I think a realtor will give you some of the um, most accurate numbers in the area. Um, you can go out and maybe network and see if there are any investors in the area um, that you can network with who could possibly give you insight about the area as well. Um, but I think realtors will probably be one of your number one sources. Probably what you also can do, speaking of uh, real groups, um, a lot of most of them, well, I can't think of one probably doesn't, especially any decent sized city, they have websites. So um, a lot of times you can reach out to uh, individuals that are on those sites that cause normally I have a message board or something that you can follow. You're probably going to join and pay a fee 
to become a member of the, the, the group to access that information. But on top of that, uh, then I may even try to reach out to the administrators of that real group, let them know you're interested in investing in the area, and um, they may be able to to assist you also. And just give you the idea of uh, what to look for. First, you have to determine what are you trying to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you trying to be a wholesaler? Are you trying to do some flipping? You want to do some buy and hold? So you got to, first you got to figure out what's your, what's your end game. All right, um, Anitra, and I'm sorry, and, and a Tara Fowler. Um, what do I say if I need to get out of your contract due to numbers not being right? Well, I would first like to think you shouldn't have entered into the contract if the numbers weren't right. But just say if you did, um, what's the out? Other than losing your earnest money, whatever that may be, ten, a hundred thousand dollars. What else is there? Do you just call and say, "Hey, I'm sorry, this isn't going to work. Can we renegotiate?" Is that just typically how it goes, or what? Um, I would say this: do it the right way. Um, one of the ways I protect myself is with a due diligence period. Um, I, you know, two to two to three days. Sometimes dealing with a realtor, so I make I make it do five to seven days. But you want to do all your numbers during that due diligence period. Do not allow yourself to go over that due diligence period um, without knowing your numbers because the co consequences is really, you can get out of any of those contracts, but you will lose your earnest money if you pass that due diligence period. All right. Um, in regards to the um, gap funding, is there a roundabout inch, give or take interest? I think um, someone was asking was it pretty high for gap funding, like 35, 50%? What's the average, you know, I guess, interest rate for that? <laughs> Golly. Yeah. Not you ever, 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 ever <laughs> get yourself in anything that's a 30% interest rate. But um, no, it's 0% interest for the first 18 months. So our focus is the first 18 months. Um, after the 18 months, you do go to regular interest rate. But our focus is to put that strategic plan in place for the first 18 months and um, see how many properties can you really flip out in an 18-month period. And, and, and conservatively, that's about three to five deals. If you run your numbers right, that's on the low end, a deal every six months, which is very conservative and very doable. Um, so our focus is the first 18 months. So in the first 18 months, um, you want to um, utilize 100% of this financing option um, so you can flip as many deals as you can um, and profit and try to profit at least six figures in your first two years. If you profit six figures in your first two years, that'll give you enough um, liquid and um, skin in the game to be able to go out there and just begin to reinvest your profits. And you'll still also have your line of credit in place for emergencies. Oh, uh, while we're on that, uh, a couple of comments when, I, when I'm going through the comments and um and uh, trying to answer people. Uh, sometimes they're commenting on either one of the flippinars you, you, you're you on or one of the interviews you and I have done. And one of the questions, I forgot the other question, but one of the questions was um, whenever they pull their credit initially going through the initial process, is it a hard pull or is it a soft pull? pull I guess it's a, it's a soft pull. It's a soft pull and do not affect you at all. Okay. All right. It was one other question. It's no different from, it's no different from opening up a credit karma account. Um, um, those things are, are all soft pools. Okay, guys, hope that helps you out. So don't be afraid to get started thinking this effect, what you've been trying to build, and it, it's it's not. So it's going to be a soft hit. Um, DMAC Beats on YouTube. This is a multiple part question, so I'm trying to put it together. Uh, I have a lead that wants 185k for their property. They seem motivated as the owner lives out of town. Oh, the ARV in the area is 190. Mm. No deal, mm. but we're gonna keep on. After I've subtracted repairs and my fee, I came up with 85k. But my partner mentor says that's too low, and we start at 125. <laughs> Bella came back and is firm on the 185. Any suggestions on negotiating this, or just move on? Just move on. But okay. Next one word. Next. <laughs> that next. Never talk about. That never <laughs> talk about. <laughs> only uh, only a deal is a deal. 
Don't, I mean, it's, it's millions of properties out here. Don't try to make a shoe fit that don't, don't fit. Keep, just keep moving. It's a numbers game. Yeah. It's a numbers okay. game. That's an easy one. See, he, that's right. something very, very easy for you. They're not motivated sellers because he's moving out of town. Motivation only means the price. In my, in my definition, you show me you're no motivated because, of, yeah, you may be going through a divorce. Yeah, you may have just lost your job. But I don't show that you're motivated unless you give me the price that shows motivation. Absolutely. That, <laughs> that term is thrown too softly. Mm -hmm. Motivation is determined by how cheap they're going to sell it to them. Every one ninety, oh, the seller wants seventy five. Oh, he's highly motivated. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, Dmat, move along. Go to your next deal. There's something else out there that'll work out a lot better for you. But I think you already knew that, though. You just need a little clarification. We got you. <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, Anthony Blake on Facebook wants to know, can I keep the earnest money from the buyer? If what? If, uh, I don't, it seems like this would be something else, but ultimately, doesn't he get to keep the earnest money from the buyer? If the buyer bags out or if the... Well, well let, me, let me start and I, you can follow up, uh, Renika. Yeah, you know, the way it normally is supposed to go is... Uh, uh, you're supposed to keep if if a, if a clear title is produced, and they're beyond a due diligence period, and they don't perform, they're, you're supposed to keep the earnings money. Now, now sometimes you know you're not controlling the side of it where it's being held, you know, because sometimes buyers want to use what they want to use. That that's fine, you know, whatever. But to answer your question, if if the title is clear, you can prove that. It's, a, it's a, um, um, a clear title, and you're outside of whatever inspection period you may have given them, which I normally don't give them one, but, uh, yeah, you're supposed to keep it. So well, what do you think, Renee? Uh No, absolutely. Absolutely right. If they um, breach the contract or they do not perform, um, you, you, have, you have every right to keep the earnest money. Actually, that's, that's part of breaching the contract is that they lose their earnest money. That's it. All right. LB says he got his business name and logo this week. Also, first 250 or 500 leads mailed out. Bandit signs down in Charlotte and utilize my bro out in Arlington, Texas to put out Bandit signs. <laughs> he says no new deals. They're coming. They're coming. It sounds like you're getting game out there. You, you're hustling. Got a lot of stuff going on. Um, that's what you got to do. So good luck to you, LB. Hope, hopefully that pans out something. Uh, let's see here. Great real estate fees wants to know where can I find where can I find good absentee lists that aren't outdated and will this bring good feedback with sending a hundred to two hundred? How many times do we send to the list and what programs to keep track of the call mail? I'm gonna tell Helen that. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> Well, let's start with uh, suggested mail to flip.com. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, well, now understand whenever you buy a list from like List Source or Melissa, that was the most known. I'm sure there are tons of others out there, but uh, those are the ones I've used over the years. Understand their information is only going to be as accurate accurate and current as how that county produces their information everybody's not on the same speed uh, on that you know uh, as far as how they produce that and make that information public so number one that's that's the first thing now uh buying the list um obviously if you buy a, a, a list now in six months from now there's going to be some sales in there and nothing you can do about that you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's just really nothing you're going to do about that. So um, the frequency, I don't know what was the second part of the question, but uh, the frequency and how much you should send, you know, 100 or so is good, depending on how you're mailing it out. You know, 100, sending out 100 postcards, that's nothing. You know, now this would, these type would increase your fee, but it's still not a lot, though. But it's better than nothing. Sending out 100 uh, letters, uh, you may get a better, a little better response, but you, you 
I'm going to always send something because you can only send what your budget will allow. But, yeah. you know, that direct mail thing can get expensive, but it, it also can pay off, you know, if done correctly. But you have to whatever whatever you can afford, you need to to when I when I mean what I mean by that, whatever you can afford consistently, you need to right. be committed to it or whatever. If that's a hundred a month, be committed to a hundred a month or you waste your time with direct mail. But if that's a thousand a month, obviously that's going to produce more than a hundred will be, but you need to be committed to it. You know, it's just that simple. You got to trust the process. She and I didn't invent pretty much none of this stuff. We're just following what others have done before us. The only thing that has changed in this business is technology to sort of make some of this stuff a little easier. But the process of putting a deal together and some of the ways to find deals has changed with technology, don't get me wrong, but the process of putting a deal together is still the same, but it all starts with generating leads and lots of them. You know, because that's what it's going to take. Because most people you talk to, they're going to want more than what makes sense for you as far as a wholesale deal. Mm -hmm. and, and just to piggyback on that, it's just absolutely right. Um, to me, it's not really necessarily about the amount. It is about the amount. It's really about the consistency behind what you're trying to do. And, and like you say, you only can do what your budget allows you to do. So figure out what your budget will allow you to do consistently um, for the next six months to a year. And that's when you begin to see the benefit of everything that you're doing. Okay, Donald wants to know for the fund my next deal, and you know we mentioned 680 as that base minimum kind of get you started credit score. Does it have to be across all three credit reports or just on one? All three, all three. Good question. All three credit reports need to, need to have a 680 or higher. And that's one of the ways that we're able to maximize and leverage your credit to be able to get you up to that 150,000. That is all um, um, above the 680. All right, good question there. I think a lot of people wanted to know because um, there's anybody dealing with credit know you transgene Equifax and what is Experian, one could be up, down, it just depends, yeah. but it has to be across the board guys, minimum. Um, Let's see here. Get a bar has a question in regards to vehicle wraps. I think someone asked this before and we said that was very expensive. I think in that car or vehicle, whatever it is, would have to be continuously moving to get your money's worth out of it. Is that still, you know, pretty much the, the consensus on vehicle wraps for advertising? Deal for what? What was the question? <laughs> uh, vehicle wraps. Vehicle wrap. The, you know how people have their, their, their vehicle wrap with whatever mess we buy houses or whatever. He, I guess oh, vehicle wrap. Vehicle wrap. Mm -hmm. Oh, what was the question about vehicle wrap? Um, is that, I guess, you know, good advertisement for putting we buy houses Absolutely. out there? Um, I think that's very great advertisement. Um, you know, wrapping your vehicle. I mean, and of course. I mean, you know, um, that's just like a driving billboard. Um, so... Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Um, Renata says, I found five houses um, driving for dollars, and I found the owner's name, but the mailing address is the same as the physical address, and there's no phone numbers. I even looked on Facebook. What are other options? I know Ty will typically say, talk to the neighbors. Um on those lists, look for other family members. Um, oftentimes when you look up those numbers, it tells you next to kins. Um, what else would be an option for finding those owners? I think we kind of asked this earlier. And they're all um, vacant? Um, yeah, I think I think she says they're all vacant, yeah. Um, skip tracing. Um, run, run their number through a skip tracing system like less is Nessus, people search. Um, I'm sure there is if 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 the if the address is the same as the property address and is a vacant property, they don't live there. So there's an inaccuracy um, in the public records, obviously, unless there's five people and all five of them died, and, you know, which is just not probably not the case. Um, so you probably want to run 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 their name through a skip tracing software. Okay. So see if you can find other, other phone numbers and addresses for them. 
Okay, Sabor so says, hey, Ty, Adria, and Renikia. This question is for Renikia. I tried to get the credit report through the email that your company sent me and it did not go through. I will try it again, or do you suggest something else? Um, I'm not for sure why, but you can send it to my email, um, funding, F-U-N-D-I-N-G, at fkfinancials.com. All right, Sabor. I hope you got that information there, and hopefully that'll get your. Oh, we'll take care of I found that other question that they had about the um, the gap funding, uh, Renikia. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a limited amount of inquiries for this gap funding? Um, going into the funding, or um, coming up. I'm well, not going sure. into funding, uh, we do we do focus in on no more than three to four inquiries in a 12 month period. Um, of course, if you have a lot of inquiries, it's probably tugging on your on your score anyway. Um, and we have the credit uh, consultants and experts to be able to dispute those inquiries um, and get those taken off your credit so you can qualify. Um, yeah. All right. Um, and after the fact, uh -huh. go ahead. Um, and, and after the fact, um, you're, you, you will person guarantee the, the trade line of 100, up to 150000 You will person guarantee that. Let's get that correct. No one is going to give you money without checking your finances, without checking income verification, tax returns, um, no collateralized asset, and, don't, and you don't have the person guarantee it. Like, this is real banking at the same time, but we have found a system where we could – Leverage your credit, get up to 150000 with limited financials that need it, that is needed, but you will have to personally guarantee them. One of the things that my company do um, after you go through funding, we will take you through um, a credit cleanup to uh, the, uh, remove as many of those inquiries for free uh, with the program that, that um, you accumulated when you went through the funding process. Okay, um, Roosevelt has a question. It looks like two or three people have to piggyback and want to know. It says, good evening. Can you all talk about the best way to wholesale in different states from in which you live? Is it possible? Can it be done? What's the best way to do that? Um, yeah, I mean, you can do really, what I love about real estate, I don't care where I am. I mean, I can go to Africa right now and wholesale everything in Africa. I mean, it doesn't matter. The concept of wholesaling is not just a real estate thing. We can do that in any business. You can wholesale a car, you can wholesale a product. Um, so the concept is, is universal, but having the boots and the team in the area is what's important when you do wholesale in other areas is having um, the amount, having the team in those areas, you know, how can you wholesale in another area where you don't know, um, you don't have a contractor in that area to tell you the scope of work. You don't have a realtor in that area to give you an accurate comps and ARV. So it's really about having, you can wholesale anywhere, but having um, an adequate team in place is what's most important when you're wholesaling um, um, outside of your backyard. Yeah, you got to have boots on the ground in some form or fashion. Um, now, I'm not, I haven't done a lot of it uh, myself. Um, I have done it, but not a lot of it, but, um, what a lot of people will do is that they'll reach out to other wholesalers in the market, you know, and, uh, use them as potential, uh, boots on the ground for, them. you know, you may have to go through a couple to, uh, get someone good and reliable and that wants to work with you because you may be, have the war chest to, um, to do a lot of marketing in a particular market and um you know be able to do some deals you know outside of your market but um again and then you may just have the the uh, uh the gator about you just to sit there and pound out phone calls to whoever in the market and, and create a deal a lot of cats do that you know whatever so that's good too but at the end of the day uh that that comes back to what renika has said she does a lot of locally is networking you you have to be really good at that to wholesale outside of your market because you're not there. You know, you're going to be dependent on as simple as keeping the seller and the buyer apart from each other. Cause sometimes 
the seller, especially you're not there, so you can't, you know, you can't be there to even put a lock box on there. So you may have someone to do it for you, but in some situations, sellers just won't give you the keys or whatever. Sometimes they're still living there. So you need someone there to mediate between the seller and the buyer, because if you're not there and the buyer just shows up, they're like, well, who are you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying now? And then unless you just have, uh, you know, you have buyers dialed in, hey, you know, if you want to continue to work with me, this is what you're going to need to do, uh, blah, blah, but it ain't going to always work that smoothly. So at the end of the day, you're going to have to do some networking and have somebody on the ground to uh, to represent you in some form or fashion. So it's basically the same thing she said. Okay. Um, Ty, we're down on Instagram. You can go ahead and load that back up. In the meanwhile, um, Alvarez on YouTube has a deal or no deal question. Um, the after repair value is ninety eight thousand to one hundred and twenty. Um, pretty big jump there. We need to narrow that down a little bit. Um, I want to get it under contract at twenty. It needs around twenty in repairs. What do you think? So you're talking about forty thousand on. We'll just put it smack in the middle, just say 110. That's a deal. That is a deal. Go for it. Yeah, Alvarez, you didn't need us to tell you that. You knew that. that <laughs> that's the deal. Um, if you can <laughs> under contract for 20,000 and it only needs about 20 grand in repair, um, get your comps a little closer. Speaking of that, if he said the comps are 98 to 120, is that too, too big of a gap? Does it need to be a little bit? narrower in that amount how much can your comps vary for them to still be good comps um i think i will focus on the comps i mean that at that point you want to you want to dig deeper and look at each comp separately what makes this property sell for 120 and what made this property sell for 98 and compare the two and if you want to hit the 120 just make sure you have a similar renovations that probably helped that prop that property sell for the one twenty. Yeah, and, and uh, just to to follow up on that, um, I hope that's more than just two comps he's talking about. Hopefully, he's, there's like a lot of them in between that ninety eight and one twenty, and like you got some one eighteen, some one seventeen, some ninety nines, some one oh fives, or whatever. So if I got consistency with some one seventeen, one fifteen. One one twenty, a couple of those, whatever. Then you know, it's just a no-brainer. Yeah, you could probably, you know, there's no question, you could probably get that in that area. Like say, and see what those are the proper, how good of a renovations were done on those. You know, and you know, because square footage, you know, obviously that matters. You know, as long as it's not that big of a difference, one way or the other. You know, so uh, it just depends on how many of those comps you have, but it was 20, what it was 20, he could get on the contract for 20 and the pair, repairs were 20. Correct. That's what he said. Correct. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's, that's good. They call that a motivated seller. Yeah. <laughs> you got you one. Um, Demond wants to know, could he use his personal home for collateral for a hard money loan and do you recommend that though? Ooh. No. Um... No, I mean, you can't use your personal home. The, the hard money loan will be collateralized by the investment property. The hard money loan will be collateralized by the investment property. Now, the skin in the game, that got, that has to be cash. has to be cash. So, no, no, you can't use – now, you can use your, your personal property and pull the equity out of it um, or do a HELOC loan or something of that nature, but for a hard money – the hard money will be collateralized by the asset that they're lending for. Okay. And as far as the 98 to 120, that was five. He said it was five different, you know, homes in that range. And he used the lower end for his calculations, just be on the safe side. So, yeah, it sounds like you, you might have you something there. Um, Facebook question from Ginger. Um, she's referring to wholesaling. Um, she wants to know, let's say you get a seller under contract and you start marketing the property on Craigslist, et cetera, and the seller sees the ad, what do you say if they think you are the one buying? I think we get this question every week about, you know, the the advertisement clause, you know, your, your stake in the property and, you know, the seller, you know, 
you're buying it, but you're selling it, that kind of catch 22 thing. So what should she do? She got blessed. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk on that. But um, just to say something on that, um, that, 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 um, that will affect your deal, you know, but I think if you don't have an end buyer in place and you know you want to, you got to go out there and market this thing online and things of that nature, you might just want to be up front, you know, with the seller, you know, um, or, or make sure you have that marketing clause in your contract, uh, which once he signed off on it, on that, regardless if he read it or not, he have gave you permission to market that property. Um, but make sure that marketing clause is in there if you're just not going to be up front with the seller on what you're trying to do. Because that will, I mean, um, if you didn't put that in the clause um, and they see that, they have every right to, to discontinue and terminate your contract because you, you say you claim to be a buyer that you're not. Um, so, um, so yeah, it, it, just be upfront about it or at least put it in the contract um, for the seller to sign, which will allow you to market the property. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'll blow up a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen. So yeah, that will blow up a deal. But to answer a question on uh what um what would you say? Um you know, just at the end of the day, you let them know, hey, I'm being proactive before I buy it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> before I buy it or whatever. But uh the other thing is is that uh, I would like to know how, Ginger, how did you uh, advertise it? Because whenever I uh, post something on any of my websites or if I post something on Craigslist or whatever, I never include the address, never. I'm not, not saying that they still wouldn't see the property, but I, I'd never include the address online. I, I only give out the address once a, a buyer has made contact with me. And the main reason that I advertise properties even if I have a property ready, if even if I have a buyer ready to go for go, or ready to go, in which is in most cases, um, I, I still, uh, uh, well, I look at it as that it helps me to continue to build my buyers list because people get in and out of the business. You know what I'm saying? You know, buyers get in and out of the business, but you always got people getting in. You know, and sometimes new new buyers are some of your best buyers as far as how much money you can make. Not that you're taking advantage of them, but they just may want to pay a little more because they're desperate to buy. So, uh, but yeah, so, but yeah, that can blow up a deal. So uh, first thing, I, I hope you didn't advertise the address, but if that you ever encountered that, just, just, just tell them, no, hey, I'm being proactive. I'm getting ahead of the game and advertising before I buy it. If they have a problem, they want to uh, get out of the deal, so be it, let them out or whatever, right. you know, just move right. on. It's not, it's not even worth the hassle. Right. And your contract yeah. is there? Is there something in regards to that in the contract? She wants to know in the one-page oh, contract. In my contract, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, just to piggyback on Craigslist, so with the other guy, someone was talking about um, buyers, how to find a buyer. Um, I remember when I first started um, um, this this real estate journey. Uh, one of the ways that I find buyers was on uh, the Craigslist, and one of the uh, one of my mentors taught me how to do bait ads. Um, and bait ads is pretty much what Ty was just saying. Um, um, you know, I honestly, I, I used to just take a picture of a random home and and put a deal that, you know, just a crazy deal in the, the description. It could be worth 200,000. I'm selling it for 40,000. Only need 25,000 worth of work. I'm motivated. I needed to go right away. And I promise you, your phone will start ringing. And as soon as they call me, I say, you know what? Someone just put it on the contract, but let me write down your name and number. And I keep you on my list because I get these deals all the time. So for the individual who asks about finding buyer list, that is a gem. It works. It, it works like crazy. And personally, when I first started, I used to do three ads a day, multiple days a week. There's an ad in the morning, in the middle, at night. And um, your phone's going to forever ring um, um, putting those bait ads out there. All right. Now, everybody, don't try doing that all at once. Give everybody else a <laughs> chance to get theirs in. There'll <laughs> <laughs> be so many bait ads on Craigslist by tomorrow night. <laughs> People just giving away houses, okay? <laughs> right. You're like, dang, what happened? Um, 
the new remix, year. Remix 2000 yeah. wants to know if you use an LLC to get an REO under contract, do I still need to provide proof of funds? Only if they, re only if they require it. You know, um, you sometimes get to the point where people don't even ask, people don't ask for proof, um, proof of funds. But if that's something that they require, then that's something that you have to provide. Okay. Corey wants to know, so basically with this $150,000 in funding, can I just tell people I'm a cash buyer for fixed flips? How fast can I pull that cash out? And um, also I got a fixed flip pre-approval of 350K. Oh, Corey doing things. All right, go ahead, Corey. Okay, so say you get the funding, then do you go out and pretend, well, not pretend, but then are you able to handle the deal as if, it's your money. You can write the check and you're ready to close the deal right then, right? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you get the funding, um, there is a process of extracting the funds from the line, um, extracting the cash from the lines, writing to your bank account, and that really a, 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 a setting up your processing. That may take about two days, um, another two days for you to extract the funds and hit your bank account. So it may take about a week um, or four or five days to for the funds to hit your bank account after you set up your processing. But we show you how to create an equity company um, as well um, for funding purposes only um, and, and, and set that up as a system um, at your, at your, at your um, 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 pretty much an entity under the entity for funding purposes. So I would say about 30, um, maybe 45 days, um, you'll be ready to, to, to have that cash ready to go. But to answer your question, I don't care if I have money or not. I'm always a cash buyer. Why? Because everyone around me is a cash buyer and all of my investors are cash buyers. If my investors are cash buyer, I'm a cash buyer because I can sell my property to my investor who's gonna who's gonna sell it, who's gonna purchase it cash. So you know. Okay. Joe Briggs wants to know how do you go about finding contractors i guess i'm thinking yellow pages but is it that simple or or, or what hmm. i mean i find contracts because i network a lot um but um you know and and, and, I, and i'm involved in a lot of real estate groups here in atlanta and you just begin to meet people over time but um i'm sure there's something you can google online and just google local contracts in your area and just begin to call them and have an interview with them, um, an interview and see if they you want them to be a part of your team. And okay. Ty may have a, a way of how he finds his contractors. Well, um, I, I guess we I guess to take it from a an approach of uh, you not knowing anyone. Um, now, is is he finding contractors or fixing flips? Now, that's one thing. Uh, no, or you just find it, huh? He said for rehab and he needs contractors. To okay. Do yeah. Rehab. Okay. Well then uh, with that, um, whew, why you get whooped over the head with contracts? Jesus Christ. Um, you <laughs> yeah. You, you probably need to do it. You, you want to do a, quite a bit of networking first and uh, speak to some guys that probably are doing some flips. Sometimes you can just drive neighborhoods and you can see renovations actually going on, you know, and uh, just walk in the house and just uh, talk to who's who, who's in charge there at the time or whatever. And um, again, that still may be a little crapshoot in that sense, but um, I would definitely seek out real meetings because sometimes they have preferred contractors on they, their list um, in particular real groups. So, uh, but networking is gonna probably be the best way to go about that if you're starting out, you know, because you could, you could get bad contracts. I had a guy that whooped me so I met him he, this is how he hustled me. <laughs> I, was at, I, I, was at, I, I was at Home Depot. I don't even know what I was in there for. Oh, Home Depot is a good place. Pickle country. On that day. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> hey, and, and make it so bad, he had got one of my, my boys that, that's in the business too, but we had never discussed it. You know what I'm saying? And the guy, well, this is what he does. He just hangs out at Home, Home Depot. He see you buying something. He might see you loading up something. And he'll pass you his business card. And be like, yeah, man, I can uh, say what. Uh, he might see you putting shingles on the 
on the uh, on on on, uh, on a vehicle or something. He said, "Man, you know, uh, you know, I do roofs, man." He said, "You you got a roof already?" You know, you may say, "Yeah, I got somebody." He said, "Okay." He said, "Well, you might want to keep my card, man. Normally, I can I'll put a roof on just labor a thousand dollars." You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you know that's gonna get your attention because you know it's going normally cost more than that. You know what I'm saying? So what he does is that he might start the roof, but you know you got other stuff that needs to be done at the house. You might start the roof. And you pay him at the end of the week, but the roof face said, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start on these windows or whatever. But could you go ahead and uh, do this or such and such? I'm almost finished with the roof. And so what he'll do is stop working on the roof and then start on the windows. And, do it. and so by the time I figured out what was going on, you know, it, the, the job was in a mess or whatever. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So just be careful mm -hmm. is, the, is, the, is the story. But mm -hmm. but like she said, you still can find some good good contracts at, at uh, Home Depot. Just got to be careful. The main <laughs> thing with, mo with, with most guys, we always we always looking for cheap. You know what I'm saying? We always right. looking for that. So the, you, you got to get over that part of it, first of all. You're always looking for a deal with a contractor. But the if you got to go to Home Depot and Lowe's to buy the materials with the contractor, you cannot pay these guys until you are satisfied at certain points of the, mm -hmm. the deal. You really want to deal mm -hmm. with contractors that can afford to fund the deal as far as materials. You know, and then you can mm -hmm. pay them draws as different points of the actual uh, of the project. But if you actually got mm -hmm. to go to Home Depot with them and back up, they don't have any money to buy. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're dealing with something. Now, again, you can still manage those, but understand what you're dealing with. Renika gonna probably have a better, a better description because she's done a lot more rehab than I have. But contracted, you know, you got lawyers, then you got contractors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the bottom to the, the 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 lower level of our society is lawyers, then contractors. <laughs> Contractors are a hit and miss. It, it, it definitely hit and miss. I think starting off, I think you want to be more involved in your contracting process. Um, going to Home Depot, Lowe's, with your contractor. Um, honestly, I know when I first did my first project, my mentor showed me how to um, separate the labor from the cost of the material um, and, and, and had them to only write me a labor scope of work and we went to purchase all the material together. Um, and, and that helped me cut down costs. But the more you pay for things up front, the less work a lot of contractors do. So I like like I like what Todd said. You really want to find that contractor that can almost afford the first draw without you paying them anything. All right, guys. And have to see them yeah. Now that was a that that was a Pretty good question. I think uh, the, a lot of you guys could get some information from that. But another one I saw here, um, as far as finding investors, someone mentioned going to auctions and getting names that way. Oh, that's that. That was a good one. Absolutely. That's probably the number one. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't say the number one, but that's probably one of the number one places to find investors. I love going to. Um, the foreclosure auction at, um, that I know we have here in Atlanta every first Tuesday, uh, every month. You want to find out who, what, what is your foreclosure um, county um, auction that goes on in your county in your in your state and go there because every every person out there have a cashier check in their hand. Because at the auction, at the foreclosure steps, at the courthouse step, you have to purchase those properties right then and there. So anybody that's there purchasing those properties is because they have checks in their hand, ready to go. So that is a great way. And I honestly probably found uh, one of my best investors um, where me and my team and I'm selling him about 80 properties in about 45 day period, um, right there at um, at um, the county county steps, work holder steps. So that's a great place. I, I totally agree. All right, guys. Um, we're about to round out in the show. It's seven, let's uh, 722 the give or take um so we all as always we go over a little bit we've answered quite a few questions here and hopefully it helps you guys get started on your journey of wholesaling flipping rehabbing holding buying whatever it is that you want to do in this retail world to uh get gay to make some money 
Uh, we appreciate Ty and Renikia being here with us. We will be here next Thursday. So the final question, um, I've seen it in the feed. And before we close out, and Renikia, you mentioned it quite a bit, your team. Um, someone wanted to know, how do you go about building a team? Who is on the team? Who, what, what would you need on the team? Is, you know, a realtor necessary? Is the contractor necessary? Is an attorney necessary? So I guess if someone who didn't want to do this by themselves and they didn't have a quote unquote a partner and they wanted to build a, a, a wholesaling squad, who's mm -hmm. on squad? Okay, that's a great, great question. I I, um, I don't believe in the one man army. I don't think anyone has became successful by themselves. So um, and I believe in um, you know um, uh, being an expert, being an expert at hiring experts or hiring the people around you. Are hiring your strength. So, um, for a real investment team, um, you definitely need, and I like to do three of each because you need a backup for the backup, you need a backup for the backup. Um, so, contractors, attorneys, real estate agents, and contracts for your scope of work, attorneys to close your deal, real estate agents to um, give you comps and to um, give you comps. And once you do, if you flipping, um, they will put it back on the market um, to sell it as a retail deal, um, as well as a field team. Um, I think a field team is very important. Um, this is a team that go out. If, you, if you're really doing all of it, like um, bandit signs every weekend, um, yellow, le yellers, yellow letters, postcards, driving for dollars. I mean, you can only do so much. So having a team may be delegated um, for every avenue or maybe having a team for driving for dollars having a team that, that only put out bandit signs, having a team that a member that only um, does absentee lists and having a team that, that does the skip tracing. Um, um, and, and, and that wholesale team right there, you, you could do numbers by delegating and having those people on your wholesaling team. And everybody is um, allocated to a certain avenue of, of, um, of, of the pie of your real estate pie. Um, so that's probably much. Anybody right, missing? Yeah, but first and foremost, we're on your team. Squad gang, we're here for you every Thursday with the information, the hippie to it. You, you got us. We're all in, in on the team together. And a mentor. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody say get the mailman on your team too. To tell you what the vacant oh, property man. is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Teach so your kids. Teach your kids. I mean, you have kids, they 13, 14, 15. Teach them how to go out there and put out them bandit signs because what you're doing is giving them a billion dollar knowledge at a very young age. This real estate isn't going anywhere. Wars are started for men. So at the end of the day, if you have kids that's 15, 16 years old, that's a summer job. That's a, you know, or whatever the case may be. Um, um, you know, find people because the field work can be done by anybody. Um, so, yeah. But no, I didn't see her here, but she normally watches and has her, her kids watching right along with us. So shout out to Ms. Ms. Vanola and her crew. Um, but guys, thank you for joining us. Um, Ty, any closing words? Anything you need to say? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, another uh, flipping R <laughs> in the can, uh, number 40. <laughs> um, we really appreciate everyone showing up. Uh, appreciate Renikia showing up again. Adria, you're doing your thing, you're making this all happen for both of us, making it easy. Uh, so, again, we appreciate you all showing up this week. Please share this with someone that you think um, may want to change their financial situation. You know, they don't have to get started and do what we want them to do, but it may inspire them to go in another direction, you know, to get the information that they need. So, even though all the information you need is here. But you know, whatever. So next week. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. This video will be available shortly for you to watch it and rewatch it and rewatch it and retweet it. But until next time, we'll see you on the flip, flip side. side. You can watch it on YouTube and Facebook. You're supposed to say that before I said flip side. <laughs> <Good job. laughs>